Welcome back to another episode of Jeepin' with Cool Guy. On today's episode of Jeepin' with Cool Guy, we're going to put the front wheel hub assembly back together. We're going to put the axle back in, put the wheel hub all back together, wheel knuckle, steering knuckle, all the pieces that go with it, all the way up to the brakes. I wish I would have filmed this for the first Jeep, but that didn't, obviously. So we're going to do this for the 79. This is practically identical to the 84 that's on my other uh, CJ7, um, but there are a few minor differences. So we're going to go through, we're going to show all those pieces and put it back together. So let's get to it. When I first took this apart, I thought that this was threaded onto the actual ball joint, um, but really there's no threading that goes onto it. It just slides over the top of this thing. Um, so when you're taking this thing out, um, you don't need to unthread this. You just need to pop this thing down through here, and then you can take this off. Steering knuckle, got your uh, ball joints all pressed in. Start from the bottom, get it all lined up, and slide the bottom ball joint post up through, and then apply the, the bolt or the nut that goes with it to the bottom part of it, get that threaded on. Then we're just putting this on here just to hold it in place so that we can get everything else um, put together. Just hand tighten that. Then you take your upper split ring stud seat. Okay, whatever. And you thread that down over the top of the post. Then take your DIY homemade tool. I took a three quarter inch socket um, just one that I had gotten at Lowe's or Home Depot, and used an angle grinder um, with a cutting stone, cutting wheel, and I cut out the notches. The reason that I chose three quarters is because it needs to be big enough to go over, the center part needs to be big enough to go over the ball joint, but it also needs to be small enough to fit inside of the threaded hole on the, the axle install this to where it is actually flush, just flush with the top of the axle yoke. There, perfect. Okay, now you want to um, tighten up the bottom ball joint um, lock nut uh, to 85 foot-pounds. There we go, 85. In like Flynn. That's tight. That's tight. All right, now that the bottom nut is tightened up, you need to take your spindle key, I don't know, whatever it is that you've made, and you need to tighten that nut to 55 pounds. And then once you get that set to 55 pounds, then you put your castle nut on, and this goes to 100 pounds. All right, 55 foot-pounds. Sweet. Castle nut is uh, one and a quarter. 100 foot-pounds. Now, when you're doing this, you're obviously going to have to get one of these slots aligned with the hole for the cotter pin. Um, and the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to loosen this up. So you may have to go over 100 foot-pounds um, just to get it to line up. Well, off by just a touch, and I'd rather not loosen it up. And there we go. And just bend the cutter pin all the way out and around. All right, now we're going to put in the axle. Slide your axle in. Now, I've seen a couple people having replace the universal joints on the axle with the spindle and um, they don't get them seated deep enough or flush enough depending on the brand um, to where they wind up coming in contact with the the wheel hub hole here the axle hole um, I didn't uh, so I shouldn't have a problem with that but, and they've done all kinds of things, like they've 
tried to use a angle grinder and grind out like pathways into uh, so that the thing will actually fit through. Um, people do crazy things. Just saying. Um, you want to make sure that you have your universal joint seated as flush as you can to the actual knuckle. I'm going to put on the uh, spindle, wheel spindle. This uh, consists of really five things. Uh, there is an inner bearing, pin bearing, um, or needle bearing that gets seated into the spindle. Mine's still in really good shape, so I didn't replace that. I, there's no wear on it, um, so that was kind of nice to see. Powder coated the outside of this thing just to prevent rust. Then there's three pieces that are kind of seal, oil seals that go on to this before we put the spindle on. First is the, the main seal, gasket seal. You want to install it with the, the flange kind of lip pointing outwards. Get that seated nice and properly. And then you don't need to, but I'm going to put just a very light coat of grease on here uh, just to provide a little bit of friction reducing. And then there's this plastic washer and there's a camfered side to it, um, kind of uh, a bezeled side. That bezeled uh, goes towards the, the axle, it's housing itself. Um, because what this does is it fits over the curve of the main base part of the spindle as it goes out into the shaft. So that should fit on there nice and easy. And then there's a small seal gasket um, that has a groove on the inside of it, well, a lip, whatever. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and just seat this right into the spindle. This should back right up against the bearing, the needle bearing, and I have it to where the, the lip is facing outwards. Now before we put this on, you want to really grease this thing up. Um, pack this thing full of grease. The, the whole inner part with the bearing um, and this inner cup part. I don't know if you can overdo it, but I'm going to definitely put some grease in here. Now that I've got that nice and loaded up, then just slide it right onto this to the short axle stub. And then the outer part of the spindle um, should fit nice and easily right over that main seal. Now we need to get the axle and spindle over the bolts that stick out of the steering knuckle. Um, the alignment may be a little off here because when I powder coated this uh, wheel knuckle I took all of the, the bolts out, um, just knocked them out with a hammer uh, so that I could get everything nice and cleaned up and then I stripped all rust off of those things and put them back in. Obviously the alignment's going to be a little off, so I'm going to put this on with a rubber mallet. There we go. Alright, now that we've got the spindle on there and it's seated nice and well, the next thing that goes on is the dust shield. Actually, before I even put on the dust shield, um, I would recommend putting on your uh, caliper anchor support. This is for a 79 narrow track axle. Uh, when they went to the wide track axle, they went with a different caliper. Um, and with that different caliper comes a different um, anchor support. Now, as far as I can tell um, and seeing, the wheel knuckle, the steering knuckle, seems to be the exact same. They just switched up the, the anchor support and the caliper itself. There is a pin, a guide pin, that goes into here, but you want to make sure that this is, face, this is on the bottom side and it's also facing inwards. These need to be uh, torqued down to 100 foot-pounds. I'm, uh, I'm reusing the, uh, the original bolts because they were grade 8. 
um, and I just did an oil treatment on them. And I think that they're, they're kind of cool, uh, just in the markings that are on them. But anyways, um, I'm also putting a lock washer, tab lock washer on here. So I'm going to install this. I'm going to crank it down to 100 foot-pounds. 100 foot-pounds, all in and done. The reason that I mentioned where that um, support key goes, slide key, is that there's no markings on the, the brake or the caliper anchor support um, that indicate what side they're supposed to go on. All right, now for the dust shield. Now here's something I don't understand. The dust shields are stamped with what side they're supposed to go on. So for example, this one has an R. Um, obviously, the other one has an L. My understanding is that that orientation is from the driver's perspective. So the driver's side is the left side of the car. The passenger side is the right side of the car. So this should fit on the right side, but for whatever reason, it doesn't. I don't know why. When you install this, you want to have the um, the cupped area facing the outside, and you want to install it lining up with your your caliper uh, support. It's really super tight, at least on mine, for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe these uh, these came off of an eighty. Four. So they may have changed the brake shield's orientation a little bit according to the caliper um, engagement. So note to self, I don't know if this is accurate, but if you're using dust shields from a different, uh, a, a later or earlier year model, you might have an alignment issue. When you're installing this, uh, you can do this any way you want. You can use a tab lock washer, or you can use um, a nylon lock nut. Uh, but these are only need, these only need to be torqued down to 33 foot pounds um, per nut. So um, I'm just going to use a little bit of Loctite, just a touch bit of Loctite on here. One thing I did want to note in while installing this is that all the things that I'm putting on here are stainless steel because. Um, this stuff doesn't, these things don't need to be grade five because they're really not holding anything on other than the wheel spindle. But I wanted to make sure that I put something on here that was never going to rust out again. All right, 33 foot pounds all the way around. All right, now that we got the dust shield on, Next thing to apply is the wheel hub. The wheel hub, there's two different versions of these really, um, as far as stock goes. There's the, the six bolt and the five bolt. Um, that doesn't have anything to do with the lug nuts. It has to do with the actual wheel hub, um, the locking hub that goes on here. Uh, so the earlier CJs, um, I don't know about the fives, um, before 76, but from 76 to about 81, um, and I think they pretty much changed everything for the most part to a certain degree between 81 and 82, uh, but it might be off there on a year. Um, from 76 to 81, they had the six bolt locking hubs. Then in 82, they switched over to locking hub, which was the five bolt. The, the one that I have for this and you'll see here in a little while once we apply that, I've got the six bolt, obviously, um, worn premium locking hub. And it's, uh, you can watch how I've restored that in another one of my videos. So let's put this thing back together real quick and get everything all greased up and ready to go. You definitely gonna want some gloves and you're gonna need some good bearing grease. Um, stuff that I've been using is the, uh, this red Bearing grease by Mobile One. Stuff's pretty daggone good stuff. You're gonna want to pack the whole inside of this thing really heavily in grease, bearing grease. Um, but the one thing that I would start with is actually packing, hand packing the actual bearings themselves. So um, I've seen a couple of some pretty well-renowned 
mechanics that do a lot of this stuff. And the way that they do it is they just take a swab of this stuff, take the bearing and just kind of press and roll. Press and roll and then you kind of get it in the sides. But you know, get this thing as lubed up as you possibly can um, before we uh, start putting this actual wheel hub together. All right, while I was uh, greasing up the bearings, um, I also applied uh, a, a pretty uh, liberal amount of uh, bearing grease to the inside of the actual wheel hub. And then I also lubed up the, the wheel spindle itself. You want to take your race, uh, inner race or outer race, whichever one you want to start with, but I'm going to start with the inner race. Um, and you're going to need a race and bearing press. Um, I got the aluminum one. Uh, the plastic ones are worthless. So make, get, a, get a metal one. Um, I got this one on eBay for like 25 bucks maybe, give or take. But uh, the one that I'm using is a 72 millimeter uh, press. It fits right on top of the bearing. Um, and right on the inside of the lip of the, uh, the wheel hub itself. I thought I'd actually show you going through the process of doing this. So you just want to set your, your press right on top of the bearing uh, or the race. Um, make sure that it's as centered as it possibly can be and just lightly tap it down. Okay, so right there I can feel that the race is now seated inside of the hub because uh, I got a little bit of a reverberation back through the actual post of the press. Okay, now the outer race is set. Make sure you got the inner edge of the, uh, the race all nice and um, lubed up with the bearing grease. And then all you need to do for this is to take your outer bearing and drop that in. Now the race should tapered in should be facing out, um, meaning that the tapered end of the bearing should be facing in, and it just seats right in there, just like that, nice and easy. Then I do the same thing with the inner. Drop that right into there. And then take your oil seal, bearing seal, um, and you're going to want to take a, a close look at your actual seal because it has a lip on both sides, but only one side is the proper way to uh, install it so that it seats over the top of the wheel spindle. Um, and it's the one with the larger lip. Uh, that's the one that's supposed to be facing in to the, the wheel spindle or basically outwards from the inner part of the wheel hub. This again, you're going to just want to uh, use your um, bearing press, seal press, and tap this in. You want to get it to the point where it's nice and level with the lip of the hub. Um, anything after that, you kind of start to push down into the bearing. And then when you actually put this wheel hub on here and we get everything cranked down, this thing will seat itself the way it's supposed to be. Now we need to move on to the rotor. So the way that the rotor works with the wheel hub is you have your um, wheel studs and they just fit simply right through the hole but the actual, um, I don't know what these, I, I can't remember what these things are called, I guess splines on the, uh, the bolt actually mesh with the wheel hub, not the rotor itself. So you need to take your wheel hub and press the wheel hub onto the, the lug bolts. You can do that with a press. You might be able to do it with a hammer. Um, I'm going to go and press these on real quick. But this is essentially what you're looking to do, is to press those through the wheel hub, or through the rotor, into the wheel hub. Now, let's install the hub. All you need to do is just slide it right on. Knowing that the 
outer bearing doesn't have anything holding it in. So be careful because you could pop it off um, with your axle stub and if it lands on the ground then you get all that contaminant in the grease and you don't want to do that. So anyways, once you slide it on here, you should be able to feel the inner oil seal, you just kind of saw it there, fit right onto the spindle. Once you get that point, you know that you're seated. Obviously push that bearing back into place. Now we need to install the outer lock washers and outer lock nuts. There's four components for the lock washers and the lock nuts. Um, first one that goes in is the lock or the uh, washer that has just the simple tab on it. You slide that right in on that wheel spindle and that tab on the washer goes right into the groove that's carved into the wheel spindle. Then take your first lock nut. Both of the lock nuts are the exact same. There's really no differentiation between the two. Thread that on and then this one gets uh, cranked down to 50 foot-pounds and then once you reach that 50 foot-pound torque threshold then you back it off one sixth of a turn. It's kind of nice because on these six bolt hubs, all you have to, you already have one sixth of the way laid out for you. You just have to align it that way. So now let's get in really close so you can see this next step. This is your outer lock washer. Uh, you can see how there's a bent, the, the tab is actually bent inwards or outwards depending on your orientation. You want to slide that into that groove and underneath the inner lock nut. Before you do that, take just the edge of that washer and bend it out a little bit. The way that I did this is I just put it into a vise and just bent the lip out just a little bit just to get it started because it's really hard to get in there with a pry bar, which you're gonna see in a second, and bend this thing out if you don't have already have it bent in that direction. Next, take your outer lock washer, apply this, apply it to 50 foot pounds, and then take that piece of that flange that you had already bent out and bend it further out over the top of, or out over the edge of the outer lock washer. All right, you want to bend it out a fairly decent amount so that there's no way that this lock nut can unwind. Now, we got that all into place, we need to install the hub. In a previous video, also on my channel, uh, I show you how to remove the six bolt um, wheel hub and also, or the uh, locking hub. I also have one on there for the five bolt. This is the, the worn premium version, but essentially they're the, kind of the same. The difference is that the premium is all metal and obviously it's better quality. Um, and then the other one, the five bolt one is, uh, it's got some inner components and its outer shield is plastic. Um, they're all made by worn. You wanna make sure that you have your gasket, uh, your hub gasket, uh, in place. I'll also put a link to uh, these. I mean, you can get them at like Quadratech or most of your um, off-road vehicle places. Um, and then once you get this into place, you want to you you want to install your 3 8 inch hub bolts, locking hub bolts. Uh, these are grade five. Uh, and they're two inches long. The other thing I put on here was a tab lock washer uh, so that um, these things don't loosen up. I don't want to put these things on with Loctite. You can if you want, but you're supposed to take these hubs off like every 50,000 miles and re-grease them and check them out and service them. And I don't want to have to fight through Loctite every time I get to that point. Um, the lock washer will serve the purpose. The reason you want to put these on before you put the cap on the hub 
is because once you get the cap on the hub, it's almost impossible, from what I've seen, to get the, the, the nut or the bolt inside of the cap and into the thread. These get, uh, these get torqued down to 30 foot-pounds. When you're about to torque these on, you're probably going to need some kind of a pro bar, pry bar or something that's going to help give you a little bit of leverage because otherwise this thing just spins freely. Um, and even though it's 30 torque, uh, only 30 torque pounds, it's still kind of hard to hold it and do it at once. So get these all down to 30. Once those are all torqued on, the last thing you do before you put the cap on is to put your uh, snap ring, your lock ring, on the very end of the uh, stub axle. Um, when you were push, when you were installing this um, and maneuvering stuff, you might have slid the axle in a little bit, um, which would make it hard to actually get to that groove. So. Just reach inside the wheel um, and slide that axle out just a touch so that you can actually get your snap ring on. Set your snap ring pliers to expand and slide it on and push it until you hear it kind of click into that groove. Maneuver the uh, axle back and forth just to make sure you're set. Give your uh, wheel a nice good spin. It should spin very freely. When we were actually putting on the lock washers and the lock nuts on the inside of the wheel hub, on the, the wheel spindle, that's when we were actually setting the tension or setting the, the bearings that are on the inside of the wheel hub and also making sure that that oil seal is seated very nicely on the wheel spindle. Now we've got that all into place. Last but not least, install your worn locking hub cap. There's a gasket that goes in between the cap and the housing. Um, I got this actually through Warren, called him up, had him send me a set, because I can't find these anywhere. I have no idea where you could get them other than from Warren. Anyways, um, two things. Probably could have gone with stainless steel bolts here, uh, because this housing on the five bolt and the six bolt premium or standard worn locking hubs is aluminum. So five grade five or grade eight is probably a little overkill because if you're gonna break the aluminum housing way before you're gonna break um, a uh, stainless steel bolt, let alone a grade five. So if you wanted to keep it to where it's never going to rust out, you could probably just use stainless steel and be perfectly fine. When you're putting the hub back or the, the hub cap back on, there is a pin um, on the inside of the or on the outside of the spring of the cap itself. That pin goes into only one slot that is carved out on the inside of the housing and that is the one curved slot. So look for that, slide that pin into that point because that's the only way that you can get it installed. Um, and then once that's into place, then take your uh, cap screws, install these. Um, I'm the hand tightening them. I, I, I couldn't find anything as far as documentation as to the factory specs, but from what I've seen in other discussions, uh, this is 12 foot pounds. Um, so on top of that, this is a 532nd inch uh, Allen wrench head. Now I don't have an Allen wrench um, socket head that I can put on my torque wrench to work this work, so I'm just going to kind of wing it um, just to the point where I feel like it's about 12 pounds. Really, these are very, it's an aluminum housing. These are very f small. I think they're number 10 size screws. It'd be really easy to strip these things out. So I don't overdo this. It's not worth it. Um, the other thing I'm also doing is kind of like you would install 
your, your actual wheel um, going in a star pattern. So cross, 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 cross. Uh, just to make sure you got everything seated right. Okay, once you get those all um, installed, it's starting to look like something now, isn't it? It's, I'm super excited. Um, go ahead and rotate your hub, um, locking hub, just to see if it actually engages properly. And then you can spin it and you actually see that it is locked in and the axle is spinning. Then take it back to four by two, see if it disengages and that it does and everything spins nice and freely. Cool, all right. Now we're past stage one. Um, that is just the wheel hub and all the components with you. So realize that anytime you have to change your brakes, you have to take off the whole hub because you have to take off this and this just to be able to take off and replace the rotor. So you'll obviously get used to doing this. Before we install the caliper, I did a little bit of reading and I, I wanted to go back and tell you about a little bit of discrepancies between the 76 to 81 and then the 82 to 86 as far as the front wheel hub. Just a couple of torque specs from what I gather. If you are operating on a 82 to 86, the caliper support anchor, anchor support, those bolts are supposed to be torqued down to 100 foot-pounds. If you're operating on a 76 to 81 with the, this different style caliper, um, they're only supposed to be torqued down to 85. The other one that I found to be different is on the inside of the wheel hub. So the inner lock nut, you torque it down to 50 pounds, foot pounds, and then you back it off a whole third, not just a sixth, but a third. And then you put on the outer lock washer and then the outer lock nut, and that outer lock nut still stays at 50. So I thought that that was kind of different between the two, but I wanted to explain that um, in case you are doing an 84 and you're watching this video for a 79 or vice versa, whatever that may be. Make sure you get all of your slide points on your caliper support anchor uh, lubricated up. So you want to do it on the inside of this lip here, the underside inside lip of the upper part of the arm because the caliper actually fits underneath and slides back and forth on these two planes across your support key which is held in place by the spring clip and the support retaining screw. Um, just so I don't forget about it later, this is actually applied to this hole at 15 foot-pounds. It's like you can almost finger tight it that much. So once you get the, the caliper support arm lubricated, then you want to run a little bit of lubrication on the groove in uh, your caliper that's going to run along these two planes. So just you know, run a nice little piece on there. It's really not going to move all that much. This is just to make sure that your caliper never freezes up to the support arm. I've got my uh, obviously powder coated, so that's not going to be an issue. Um, these are different than a lot of the modern calipers because there's no pins um, that the, the caliper slides on. It just slides on the support arm. So that's why you want to make sure you got enough lubrication. First, you want to start with the inner brake pad. Inner brake pad has two tabs on them. Uh, this particular model has little flanges on the end of the, the brake pad. They fit right into the slot of the caliper support, anchor support. It drops right into there and right in up here. And then it fits perfectly inside of this curved out, cut out area of the caliper. Then take your main caliper, grab your outer brake pad. Um, you'll notice that it has two tabs on the top part and then one flange that runs along the bottom. I think this is kind of like a dust, uh, brake dust shield. I don't really know what purpose this serves other than that. 
that slides into and fits perfectly inside of the, uh, the outer part of the caliper. So you can see how those tabs fit right over that, and then the, the main plane fits right underneath there. So it's a nice tight fit. And then place this over the top of the inner brake shoe, and then slide it right into place. Once you get the caliper in, you can kind of let it rest there a little bit. Then take your support key and the spring, put the spring on top of it so that the, the tabs are pointing down. Lift up, push up on the caliper as much as you can and slide that key in underneath the bottom part of the caliper. It'll be just enough room to get it to fit in there. Slide it across. This should go very easily and nice and gently, especially if you got it lubed up nicely. And then take your support key retaining screw. Um, you also want to slide, you only want to slide the support key in far enough to where it fits right on top of the bottom tongue of the support anchor and the inner uh, cutout of your support key is right aligned with the support key retaining screw hole. Screw that in, apply 15 pounds of foot pressure. Like I said, not much. And we are in. Caliper has been installed. There's a nice little close up of the back of it. So, front of the vehicle's out here. Um, this is the support key. This is the clip that goes on top of the support key, in between the support key, the anchor, and the caliper. And this is what it slides on. And then this is the support key retaining screw. So this is what I was talking about with that cutout of the support key. This is where you want to have it aligned, and then you just slide it in nice and easy. I put the whole wheel hub together, uh, got everything installed, and then realized that the rotor that I had ordered, which was for a six pin wheel hub and then a five bolt um, lug nut pattern, but what I wasn't paying attention to was the actual thickness of the rotor. There's two different widths to the rotors. I inadvertently ordered the, the thicker one. I think it's like 1.125, and it is really, really freaking thick. Um, so what had happened is, is I go to, to put on the rotor, I can't even get the caliper to fit over the rotor with the brake pads in there. It's like a quarter of an inch uh, too thick. So I tried to figure that out, and then I realized that there's actually two different widths of the rotors. So if you have this type of brake caliper on your CJ7, or 5 maybe, um, you're going to want to go for the thinner one, and I believe that that's a .875 width rotor. Um, for a two pin or a two bolt caliper and a six bolt wheel hub pattern. Just take note of that because I don't want to have to, I don't want you to go through what I just went through because it was a week because I had to send the rotors back and I had to get the new ones in and it was all because I didn't know that there was a difference in the rotor width. I want to point something out before we sign off on this awesome video is that uh, I had previously installed the calipers wrong side. Uh, on the caliper itself, the, there should be an indicator of what side it goes on. There should be an R for the right and L for the left. And also, a good way of knowing is that the brake bleeder is supposed to always be at the top part of the caliper uh, so that you get all the air out. And two, that where the brake line uh, connects into is in the narrowest part behind the wheel knuckle. So your brake line should just run straight up and around right up to the actual uh, frame bracket. Yay! We got the wheel hubs all put together, at least for the Dana 30 on the 79CJ7. Alright, looking forward to the next video of Jeep with a Cool Guy. I know I am.